This let's bring in Texas Congressman Michael McCall, Chairman of the Homeland Security Committee. He also serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, a lot to talk to you about today. I want to start with North Korea. Thank you for talking to us. Thank um, you. North Korea is once again playing games. Are you surprised the White House was caught off guard by the North pulling out of the summit with South Korea? I, I don't think they were uh, caught by surprise. I think this is a, a, a tactic of North Korea. Over the last three uh, presidencies, North Korea has, has always uh, tried to test us. They try to bring us into negotiations and make us have concessions before we meet at the table. And I think uh, John Bolton and Pompeo and the president are standing firm that we're not going to make concessions just to get to the negotiating table. And I think that's been the fatal flaw that's happened <clears throat> over the last previous three administrations where the North Koreans have played us and continued their nuclear weapons uh, program. You know, by threatening to cancel the summit with President Trump, Pyongyang is obviously sending a clear message. He thinks he holds the cards. Uh, and, and once he eventually has final word, the president of this United States is going to follow suit. That's not how this is going to work. Uh, Kim Jong-un does not hold the cards. He needs to understand that. If he keeps down this road, what does the president need to do to show him who's steering the ship? I really think this campaign of maximum pressure as opposed to what President Obama did with Iran to appease Iran to get to the negotiation table. I think the administration is playing this out perfectly by putting maximum pressure through sanctions. Uh, and particularly, as you mentioned, China. China has been very helpful in this respect. And as you mentioned earlier, China does not want North Korea to pull out of, of these negotiations and these talks. So I think leveraging China sanctions, not giving in to this. Um, I think, you know, Kim Jong Un just testing uh, President Moon in South Korea to see if he'll concede on these uh, on these routine uh, uh, military exercises. Uh, I would advise and caution not to give in to their uh, concessions before you even get to the negotiating table. You want to negotiate out of strength, not out of weakness. North Korea's vice foreign minister <clears throat> accuses the U.S. of making reckless statements and of harboring sinister intentions. They are directly pointing the finger to John Bolton, uh, who said recently that North Korea could follow a Libya model of verifiable denuclearization. Pyongyang obviously knows what happened uh, when Libya's Colonel Gaddafi gave up his nuclear program. Um, he was killed by the Western-backed rebels a few le years later. Who does the cleanup now? Does Mike Pompeo step in and try to c convince Kim Jong-un that he will not suffer the same fate? Because that is now the concern. And Mike Pompeo has worked so hard to bring talks to the table, and that could potentially be all washed away. Well, you know, Mike Pompeo is a former colleague of mine. I have tremendous respect. I've traveled a, abroad with him. I think as Secretary of State, he is the chief diplomat here. And, and you know, the, the military uh, works to get the diplomats uh, to the table working mm -hmm. together. And so I, I have every faith and confidence that Mike is going to be able to pull this off. There will be a June uh, 12th summit. And, you know, again, like President Kennedy said, let us not fear to negotiate, but let us not negotiate out of fear. Uh, and let's not let Kim Jong-un bully the United States around. We need to let him know that we are a superpower, that we are not going to stand for a nuclear uh, North Korea. Right. And, and, and to the credit of the maximum campaign, we have seen uh, signs of the missiles not being fired and by satellite imagery, actually dismantling mm -hmm. uh, some of these nuclear facilities, that is a big step forward. Right. All right.